Okay guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the new Jumper T8SG V2 Plus. I know a lot of you are interested in this. I had a lot of questions, comments on when this was coming out. It's been delayed. Um, I was kind of expecting this maybe a month or so ago. And finally got it in. Uh, I know that they've now created, I think, two different SKUs. There's the T8SG, the original, and then there's the T8SG version 2, which is sort of like an upgraded... Uh, version 1 with I think different colors and stuff like that and maybe new firmware and then there's this version that I got this is the uh, T8SG version 2 plus this one has the uh, hall sensor gimbals and the bigger uh, OLED screen just basically it's gonna be all around better so we're gonna unbox this and we're just gonna take a quick look at it I'm not gonna go over into the details of the radio uh, I'm gonna make separate videos on those like you know uh, things like binding, you know, basic stuff, and then if you guys, you know, have anything, questions or requests for videos on this radio, do definitely leave me comments below, so I'll take that feedback into account into future videos. But uh, I wanted to get uh, at least an initial video out right away because there was so much interest in this, so at least you guys can see what's going to be out there. I don't know if it's actually for sale yet, but it should be on sale on Banggood pretty soon and possibly your best a little bit later. But let's go ahead and get this out of the box first. Okay, so here, here's what we get in the box. It is a, a basically a case, and then you get a quick start guide. There's not much here, just some specs and stuff. Uh, this isn't all that interesting. It just has uh, diagrams on what's what. So, uh, you can use this as reference. It's got the same uh, case that I think that the original uh, version 1 came in. And we have a lanyard neck strap here. And then we got the radio itself. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in the version one here. Now, I'm sure um, some of you guys have been following my channel very closely know that I've switched over to the uh, jumper radio here as my daily driver. And I'm no longer flying the Turnigy Evolution. It's not that the Evolution wasn't a good radio. I, I thought it was okay. Uh, I flew it every day and it was fine. It was definitely a flyable radio. Uh, but I also fly a lot of um, uh, models that have free sky receivers in them. And having to carry around both the Tyrannus and the Evolution and to the field was just a hassle. So I ended up switching over to this radio here. Um, and I made an initial review video on it, but didn't make any follow-up videos like uh, instructional stuff. I was planning to when this radio came out. And it was been, it's been delayed and delayed, and so everyone was wondering where these extra videos were going to be coming from. That's because I was going to just go ahead and do it on this radio here, because I knew that basically this version 1 here was going to be obsolete uh, fairly soon. Uh, turned out it wasn't quite as soon as I thought. But in any event, um, yeah, this was my daily driver. I've been using this for probably a good 3 or 4 months now, pretty much every day. And I fly most, you know, mostly free sky and fly sky. I don't have anything with Spectrum. I think I have one or two small things that have Spectrum, but I mostly don't don't fly Spectrum. And then also, this is good for some of those toy grade things like that use the Bang uh, Toys Protocol, uh, uh, Cheerson, SEMA, etc. This is a you know universal radio. It'll work for pretty much everything. It's got a 401 protocol module in there. Of course, the upgraded version has all the same you know goodies as well. But now that we have the version 2 plus out here, we can see that. Let's see how it looks, you know, next to the old version. And obviously they've gone to a slightly different design. Uh, I believe the original here was sort of based off of one of the Futaba models. So I don't know if you guys were aware that I think some of the 3D printed parts for the one of the Futaba radios would, would work for the jumper. So I think some people may have known that or not. I'm not sure. Um, but they have looks like they've gone to a sl slightly smaller case here. I can't. It's a little hard to tell. Let me put it right over top. It's a little, yeah, it's true. It's almost, it's a little bit different shape. It's a little bit taller. Put them right next to each other. The the new version is a little bit taller. Just the overall sh uh, shape of the case is just a little bit different. Obviously, you got the Hall sensor gimbals on the plus version here, where you have the standard gimbals here. Now, I, I, I thought the gimbals on the, on the original version were just fine. They weren't awesome or, or any, by any means, but I think with the new these new Hall sensor gimbals, we'll, see, we'll have to see obviously how they do. But they feel you know mildly a little bit better than the original. But these these don't don't feel 
as nice as the Hall Sensor Gimbals on the Tyrannus. If uh, you guys were curious about that, um, that is one thing that I can just tell just from the feel. It is a it is a little bit nicer feel than what's on the original jumper, but it's not quite as nice as what's on the Tyrannus for those Hall Sensor Gimbals, so that's something you should keep in mind. And the other big thing that's different is going to be the screen. You can see we have a nice, much bigger screen here in the middle. Uh, this is just an LCD screen here on the version 1 and then the version 2 here, the Plus, comes with the OLED screen. So I think you have to get the uh, Plus version with the Hall Sensor Gimbals to get the bigger OLED screen. And we have these dials here on the original. Those aren't on the first, on the new version. They have these, they, they, they move the dials off to the side, these little sliders or, you know, the dials. So if you're looking for like uh, something like some, something like this, I think this is actually better on the sides uh, versus the in, the, in the middle here, it's kind of hard to get to. And you can still have your thumbs on the stick and uh, adjust these if you want. You got, um, let's see here, we got, Three position switches here up top and then these two here are two position switches you got your same detachable antenna there it looks like you got headphone jack and their usb port here probably for former updates i think believe also you can transfer miles back and forth by uh, turning on the usb drive feature which i plan on doing moving our miles over from the old radio to the new one and then on the back this is another good feature you have uh, jr module bay so you can you can put in like uh, JR modules in here for other protocols that might come out in the future for expansion. So that's really nice. I I do have a Crossfire uh, transmitter module. I don't know if it'll work or not, um, but I'm going to actually give it a try and see if I can get that to work. So if I can get that to work, I'll make a video on that, obviously. And it looks like this this actual this, uh, thing in the back here is not actually a cover. It's just a box. So you could potentially put other future modules in here and use this um, for something else. I'm not exactly sure what, uh, but yeah, this, this actually could be used for something if you want, if you want to develop it. So that's kind of nice, but yeah, it's a standard JR module uh, bay here with the five pins. So nothing really spectacularly interesting about that other than the fact you can uh, add uh, other modules here if you want to. And the bottom here is the battery bay. I'm gonna pop that open. And they're now using a tray for the AA batteries, so you can use AA batteries if you want, or a LiPo. But you have a, looks like a 2S uh, balance connector here. I believe it has a, a voltage range up to, I think, a 4S battery. So uh, I'm probably just going to use some sort of a 2S battery, a LiPo, or maybe, I'm not sure if a lithium-ion battery is going to fit the size, but this is, you can see here, uh, this is for four AA batteries, but if there's a battery out there that's uh, this size that can fit into this bay, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'm going to be searching for that because I uh, would prefer to use a lithium-ion battery versus uh, nickel metal hydrate rechargeable batteries. Uh, lithium-ion will definitely last longer. All right, so we'll get some batteries in here and let's power this up. Okay, so I got the batteries in there and they got a little button in here instead of like the sliding switch on the original version. This is kind of like what's on the QX7. I'm just going to press it and turn it on. We have a the OLED screen here. It looks like the refresh rate on the screen here is not uh, matching up, syncing up to my camera. So this might be flickering, but um, it's actually not flickering in real life. Just keep in mind that it's probably the difference in the refresh rate between the this screen and the camera. So if you see flickering, that's why. You see, how, you know, this just looks pretty much like uh, the original jumper. Uh, you got the voltage here, your model number. Uh, you can go into here. It's got the model menu, transmitter menu, USB about deviation. It looks like it's on version 5.0.0. And I'm not sure what this means. Uh, obviously, they probably tweaked the firmware specifically for this model, so I'm not sure uh, if an up upgrade is possible or not. But Because uh, obviously you got things like the the JR module base, so they probably customized it for that. And then see, uh, transmitter menu. Yeah, all of this stuff looks pretty much the same. If you're familiar with Deviation TX, then uh, this is not going to be uh, any anything different. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. Just a quick look at the radio. Um, you know, this color I'm not particularly fond of. I, it's a, 
the plastic doesn't uh, doesn't feel particularly cheap, but the color looks kind of unappealing to me. I, I'm not, I can't quite characterize it as cheap necessarily, but it just doesn't appeal to me. The yellow. I wish they would go on with something different. Obviously, I, obviously you could probably take this up radio apart and maybe hydro dip the yellow to something else because that shouldn't be too difficult because then this black part I like the black in the back obviously that's that's totally fine but yeah uh, it shouldn't be too difficult you got some screws here you can take this yellow casing off and potentially do some hydro dipping and make it really customized um, yeah I, I yeah, other than that, I, I really like the way it feels with the even with the batteries down here. It feels balanced, not too bad, although I think it's still gonna be it's gonna still dip, you know, the uh, the weight's gonna be in the bottom part here, so the lan the lanyard is yeah, the, just by holding it by the lanyard hook here, it doesn't seem like it's too unbalanced, so it should be okay. Uh the gimbals do feel nice, definitely nicer than what I'm used to on the version one. Um but I think it's definitely not as nice on the as on the free sky. It's a little bit uh, it's a little bit looser actually. The free sky ones are kind of stiff to me. Um, but yeah, and then obviously I'm gonna have to adjust the height of the sticks. They come stock super low. You can see the uh, the screw there, and they're really low like this. But this can you can adjust these up. You can see that there. It's uh, this all adjustable, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to do a actual formal review video on the radio at some point. Go over the uh, uh, features of the firmware and also do some uh, examples of binding stuff like that. If you guys have any other suggestions on what I should cover in that video, questions, leave me comments below. Let me know, and I'll take all that feedback into account. Anyway, I've gone long enough on this little unboxing video. I wanted to keep, keep it short, but yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people going to have more questions anyway. Anyway, that's going to do for this video. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.